like that cartoon character who walks around with a cloud of dust and flies over his head. Only in Mr. Hayes' case, it's cigarette smog. Do you know that he has rediscovered the principle of the catalytic converter? Whatever tar and nicotine he didn't manage to drag into his lungs the first time around, he just breathes in second hand. I am never going to get this foul stench out of this room. Well, I don't know what's worse, the smoke or that spray. What? I got it from the maintenance closet. Well... It's floral fantasy. Hmm. Oh, great. Now my office is going to smell like a harlot with the two pack a day habit. <laughs> he managed to smoke so much in the short time he was in here. Well, I reckon we're just going to have to find him uh, an insulated place to work. Oh, come on, Clint. Just stick a board out the window. Let him sit there with his laptop and his cigarettes. You can signal him through the window. Uh -huh. Look at this. He burned a hole in my brand new furniture. He'd like you to set fire to this whole place before he dies of lung cancer and raises our health premiums. On the other hand, he might just speed up the process by falling off the roof in an alcoholic stupor. No, I've never seen him in a stupor. And you don't even know he's drunk until he passes out cold. Well, at least that stops him from smoking. I am trying to look at the bright side. Are you really angry? Yes, I am. I don't care what he does in his own time, but when he's in this building, he has to have a little courtesy to his co-workers. Are you going to fire him? Do you have any idea how he sees this story about stars fight for life. Well, I'd say that uh, we're going to get an exclusive when he tracks down the driver of the car that forced Patrick off the road. Oh, yeah, and that's going to sell papers. In the meantime, Clint, he is exploring the heart of the matter, and I mean heart in the best sense of the word. Which is? Two fathers, two children, one woman who connects the two of them. The nature of love, the nature of sacrifice, of loss. Not unfamiliar territory to Mr. Hayes. It would be a string of sentimental cliches in the hands of a lesser writer. He is approaching it on an archetypal level. He's going to reach into the souls of our readers. You don't say. He's a wonderful writer, in spite of his vices. And you hate to admit it. You know what I have a real hard time understanding? How a man who is that self-destructive can still have such respect for human nature. I mean, he sees right through Todd's cynicism and, and Patrick's defensiveness. Those two men have been humbled by the same thing that every parent has to face, and that is the fact that no amount of love or, or attention or money or determination can guarantee your child health or happiness. It is all in God's hands, and sometimes it is very, very hard to trust in God. And I smell another Pulitzer. My plant is suffering from smoke inhalation. Oh, if this dies, I'm taking the price of a new one out of Mel Hayes' salary. Good time, Mom. Hey, Dad. Oh, sweetheart, hi. Am I interrupting something? Never, honey. Uh, no. What brings you over here? Hunger. Mom's taking me out for dinner. Oh. Sounds nice. Well, if you're free, why don't you join us? Yeah, can you? Well, you know, come to think of it, I, uh, I'm kind of hungry myself. Where are you going? I thought we'd go to the palace. That way I can stop at the hospital and look in on Blair. Oh, well, in that case, why don't Jess and I go on ahead to the restaurant and snag us a table? Good idea. Who smokes? Oh, oh please. Oh, don't get your mother started on that again. Uh, look, we'll get him one of those ashtrays that sucks in smoke. Or, or uh, an isolated... An isolation chamber from the $64,000 question. You and I are not old enough to remember that show. Oh, yeah, you're right. Of course not. Well, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to this. It's been quite a while since I had you all to myself. Not, uh, not since you went up to the cabin with Chris, anyway. Dad, please, I really don't want to... Don't screw your face up like that. You look like your mother when she's disapproving of something. I just want you to set my mind at ease about a couple things. What do you What do you want from me? Do you want uh, you know this alibi that proves that I was not at the scene of the accident? Where were you? I don't know. I was I was driving around trying to figure out what to do with Joey and his stupid letter. I wasn't paying attention. 
I went to see Cassie. Okay, that, that's good. How long were you there? I don't know. An hour? I don't remember. Did you come straight home afterwards? It is none of your business. I'm just trying to help. Well, you know what you can do to help? You can just, like, get off my back, okay? I have been at the hospital for hours. I am sick about Blair. I am in shock about the baby. I'm not having a good day. I bet you're not. First Joey bells on you, then you hear about Blair. You gotta let some of this stuff out. Tell me about the accident. All I know is what Dorian told me. Go on. Patrick was driving Blair home to her penthouse to pick up a few things and she wasn't wearing her seatbelt. Why wasn't she wearing her seatbelt? She should have been. It was raining. And uh, the roads were very slippery. The other car was coming from the other way. The driver must have lost control. Or just looked away for a moment. It happened so fast that Patrick had to swerve. It may not have happened if it wasn't raining. Or if it wasn't dark. Oh, God. You want to try that again? No. I think you better. Before I came home, I went with Kevin to Vicky's cabin and we made love. And last night, when you went for a walk? I lied I was with him. What are you going to do? Me? Yes. What are you going to do? You. No, you told me what you had done. You didn't tell me what you were going to do next. I don't know. It was last night. First time. Yes. We argued, and you got into your car, and you went to a uh, carriage house, and that's where you found Kevin? Yes. So it was a conscious decision. Well, I, don't, I don't know what you mean. So that means that it didn't happen in the heat of the moment. You made a choice. You said, I'm going to go to Kevin. I will commit adultery. It wasn't like that. Yes, it was. How can you be so sure when I'm not so sure of anything at all? I hope that's not true. I love you, Andrew. <gasps> yeah, but you made love to another man. But I still love you. I love us. I love River. Yeah, I know you love River. No, no, no. It's not just River. Andrew, I love everything that we have here. I love our home our life together. You know, we are so com comfortable with each other. I just... 
Andrew, you know me better than anyone's ever known me. And, um, that's why I trust you. It's why I trust how you feel about me. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Hmm. Frankly, no. For God's sake, will you stop being so remote? Be careful what you ask for right now. Because it, it is taking all my self-control to keep from going out that door and finding Kevin and smashing my fist into his face. Okay, don't blame Kevin, blame me. I do. How did you expect me to react? You know, gee, Andrew, I really don't know. You know, I just haven't had that much experience with adultery. Any suggestions? I'm so glad I told you. Me too. That means you trust me. I just, I keep, I keep seeing those lights. When I close my eyes, they're coming at me. And they, they, they pass me and I, I hear the crash. And, you know, I, I thought, I thought that I needed to stop, you know, I need to help them. And I, I called 911, but, but I, I didn't. I, 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 I should have given them my name and I, I should have waited, waited for the police or the ambulance. That wouldn't have made any difference. It was, it was a horrible accident. Accidents happen. There's no sense in making it any worse than it already is. Thank you. Can I get a drink of water? Well, Drew, making a habit out of that, aren't you? Not even subtle anymore. I'm expecting a phone call, so when it rings, leave it. Suit yourself. You didn't. Of course I didn't. You said you could trust me, and I meant it. I'll keep your secret. I'm so sorry I dragged you into this. I'm not. You needed somebody. I'm just glad it could be me. Look! Look! Honey, please. Here, don't move, all right? You'll only hurt yourself. More. I want to see him. <laughs> Honey, if. If you move, you're going to injure yourself gotta even see more. I Just gotta see stop it. Don't you I do want that. to see him. You don't Hello? understand. Hello, him. Mrs. Manning needs a sedative, and oh. right away, please oh. hurry. Oh, oh, what? Come on. Oh. I want you to think about Star. I want all right. my Star. Star. We've got a daughter now for Star, honey. Oh. She's going to be all right. Did you tell her about the baby? I told her he was dead. I didn't tell her you were a murderer. Say that again, murderer. I see you rotten in hell. Either. Both of you, please, please don't do this. That man just lost his child. That man just killed his child. Todd, for one second, would you put yourself in his shoes? 
What if Star had been the one to die? You just don't get it, do you? You don't see it? Or else you do see it, you just don't want to. What are you talking about? I'm talking about evil. Patrick didn't run his car off the road into the tree by accident. That is the vilest thing you have ever said. Yeah, it's vile, but it's true. That baby meant the world to Patrick. Not as much as his precious Margaret did. It was coming down to crunch time, wasn't it? Baby Thornhart wasn't just going to be a, a lump in Blair's belly much longer. And, and you were here when Marty issued her, her ultimatum. You didn't hear any ultimatum. Yeah, you did. What did she say, that damn baby? She said you couldn't deal with it. She said it was him or it was her. And then Patrick walked out of here saying that, that, that he was going to take care of it. Todd, you know what he meant. He was going to take care of Blair because she was upset that he went by the... He went to calm her. No, man, he saw his, his last chance walking out of here. And, and, and I don't know when he got the, the, the bright inspiration. Maybe he, maybe he was on the wet road when it happened. Maybe he, he planned it. Because, you know, he had a seatbelt. She didn't. He had an airbag. She didn't. So what does he do? He picks the perfect spot and wham. Mm. She sedated. She tried to get out of bed. She wanted to see her. Our poor dead baby. She's not ready to accept this. Yeah. If you're going to be here for a little while, I would like to go talk to her doctor. And they said he was on rounds. You didn't do anything wrong. I'm the one. What happened? I lost control of the car. And we hit a tree. Where? Where is he? Where's our, where's our Brendan? He's in heaven, Blair. Where? Where is he? I laid him to rest in St. Joseph's Cemetery. He had a, a proper Catholic funeral. of his hand and it almost seemed like his fingers were closing around mine. Strong little hands. Strong arms and legs too and broad little back.
I don't know why I tortured myself, you know. I, I really expected this horrible scene. I, I, I figured you'd be hurt, you'd be angry, you'd yell at me. I mean, you never have, but I didn't know what to expect. Certainly not this, that's for sure. I asked you what you wanted. I'm still waiting. Honesty. Then be honest. Well, what do you want me to do, Andrew? You want me to get on my knees? What do you want to hear? That I feel dirty? That I feel ugly? That I feel unworthy? That I feel unfaithful? Say something! You're still not being honest. Andrew, why are you being so honest? It hurts. Take responsibility, Cassie. How? You want me to go out on the street? You want me to shout that the minister's wife has committed adultery? Stone her? No. You want me to stone you. <laughs> you want me to just cast you out. No, Andrew, I'm asking you for forgiveness. Come on, to save her. Come on, you've given me everything I've ever wanted. Well, I gave you what you thought you wanted until you met Kevin, and I don't even know if it is Kevin, but that isn't even the point. The point is, you are so... You're so afraid of making a mistake. And you think that if you can put me in the corner, force me to make the decision, then you'll have someone to blame. All right. All right, Cassie. Here it is. Last thing that I can give you. Last thing. This marriage is over. sermon that I got to finish you. <laughs> oh, that's it, that's it. I, I, our marriage is over. I've got a sermon to finish. You know better than that, Cassie. This whole thing's been going on for, it's been going on for, for, for months, month, year. And, uh, I mean, ever since you got involved with Kevin, ever since. Andrew, we, we have only been involved at work until yesterday. You're wrong. Every time you're around Kevin, you light up. It's like... I saw it. I saw you try to fight it. I, I tried to understand it. I tried to give that to you in the relationship, and it. I'm not Kevin. I'm never. I'm never going to be Kevin. Come on, Andrew. I don't want you to be Kevin. Come on. Come on. He can be. Oh my God. He can be obnoxiously competitive. He can be totally selfish. He can be arrogant. He can be. You light up. You light up. I mean, what do you want to do? Yeah, we can go on pretending. You want to do that? I don't, I don't think you want to do that. I sure don't want to do that. You can't forgive me. I would have thought that our, our, our marriage had a chance, Cassie. I mean, some marriages survive, but that was before. And I mean, I was expecting it, actually. I thought it would be more his doing than your doing, and uh, I guess maybe that's the difference for me. I tried. I know. I don't know when it became inevitable. Maybe it was at Carlos' murder or at Rio. It doesn't matter. What about River? Well, uh... We'll deal with River. No, I mean... Isn't River worth some sort of effort? He's the reason that we should move quickly. I love him so much. Don't, 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 really don't, don't, uh, don't. Don't, please. Don't. Don't uh, prolong this for River's sake. I mean, don't, don't pretend that you can uh, give up Kevin for River and... Even if you could do that, that just would never be uh, enough for me. Hey, 
Hey, cutie. Do you know a good lawyer? Not a criminal lawyer like Nora, but a family lawyer. I could use one myself. Well, it's just that uh, Daddy's estate is a little more complicated than I thought, and I, I, um, I came at a bad time. <clears throat> end of a marriage I know you're crazy with fear but that is no excuse for what you're saying about Patrick thank you for your compassion Todd I've been here I've spent hours days weeks walking these halls waiting I have faced death and so have you now Blair and Patrick are in there right now mourning their baby Blair is don't do this don't do this. Be the, the father and the husband and the person that I know you can be. Patrick, how is Blair? She's empty. Is she in a lot of pain? Her heart's broken. Yeah, I guess it is. I'll, I'll come back tomorrow and check on her, Vicky, okay? Okay. You stay the hell away from her. You turn your back on me again, Patrick. It's the last time I'm going to warn you. I was wondering if Kevin had come home. Yeah, he's upstairs. I'll get him. Oh, cool. Oh, good. You're here. I can thank you. Hi. Yeah, why? Um, asking questions about the accident that killed your cousin's baby? You got me thinking. <clears throat> I did? Call it uh, professional curiosity. I mean, I may have to defend a hit-and-run driver someday. So I did some research. And I was right. They'll throw the book at him. Vehicular homicide carries a mandatory prison term if the killer leaves the scene. Of course, they have to find the killer first. They will. Don't worry. Tire tracks are just as revealing as fingerprints. Okay? Hey, you ready? We were on our way to Rody's. We're starving. There's okay. nothing to eat in this house. Okay. Hey, uh, Kev, don't forget. Somebody's here to see you. Oh my gosh, I thought I was going to scream. Hey, I told you, I'll take care of you. <sighs> Hi. Where have you been? Uh, oh, you, uh, you look glad to see me. You adore your wife. Yes. Would... Well, did she ask you for a divorce? No, it was my decision. This doesn't make any sense, Andrew. What no longer made sense was the marriage. Well, then figure it out. It's too late, Maggie. Andrew, come on. You got into a fight about something. Go after her. Throw yourself in front of the car. Thrash it out in the driveway. Remember when you remember, remember when you decided that you wanted to leave the order, and you still loved the church, and the church still wanted you, but somehow it just wasn't enough. How did the end begin, Maggie? Kind of a vague uneasiness, and then you fought the temptations. You tried harder. Felt like a hypocrite. Ultimately, you decided that you had to leave before you began to hate the thing that you loved. That's not what you said to me at, at the time. You told me I was taking the easy way out. I'm older and wiser and now. sadder. I suppose so. Look, if this happened when you guys were stressed out about the Chicago job, I get it. But you worked through that. You were amazing. I mean, the two of you seemed to come out stronger. 
You and Kathy and River have been like the perfect family. Yeah, well, you should know all about perfect families on the surface, Maggie. Yeah, I guess I should. You're right. The trouble came from the outside. I mean, at least that's what I want to believe. I suppose I'm probably more to blame than I care to admit. The outside? Meaning what? Meaning somebody else? Kevin Buchanan? Yes. Okay, look, let's just think this through, all right? They've been thrown together at work, right? They, they, they get caught up in these stories. I'm sure it's exciting, like that trip to Rio. Maybe Cassie has mistaken this excitement for something else. It might not be as serious as you seem. <clears throat> it's about as serious as it gets, Maggie. They're lovers. What's up? Are you busy? Working on a couple of things. Oh, well, then I'll keep this short. Um, it turns out that my client, Alex Olinov, is a suitable bone marrow donor for Star Manning. <laughs> Small world, huh? Yeah, she leads a charmed life. Yeah. It couldn't have come at a better time, I agree. So the transplant's gonna be in a couple days, and naturally, I want all the publicity we can get. Marrow miracle for murderers. <laughs> yeah. So will you do a story? I, I mean, she is saving a child's life. Mel Hayes is already doing that story, and I can't infringe. I'm sorry. You can ask him. Oh. Okay. That all you wanted? No. Uh, no, not really. If it's not too much trouble. I'd like to know what's going on between us, if anything. <sighs> Saved by the bell. Yeah. I think I just got my answer. Hey, uh, Cassie and I are colleagues. I mean, it's natural that she would come over to discuss a problem with me if she had one. Don't worry. I don't gossip. So, you finally snagged him, huh? Just go away. Is that what you want? I'll see you tomorrow. Probably not. He said. Still waters run deep. Andrew, you're not... You're just not bleeding on the rug. You're dying inside. Kind of feels like an out-of-body experience. It's shock. Your mind will let you feel everything at once. I felt that way after Daddy died. It is a kind of death. Does, um, does Kevin love her? I hope so. For her sake. I hope she loves him. Wait a minute, are you saying there's a possibility that she doesn't? I thought that she loved me. Once upon a time. Oh, yeah. This is such a mess. Say that again. At least, uh. So. Daddy, where's mommy?
shed down there. <laughs> Mommy had to go out. She's asleep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And not another word about the accident. It wasn't an accident. Nobody shares your paranoia, and nobody wants to hear it. Yeah, well, she's going to hear it sooner or later. I'm not going to let Patrick off the hook on this one. And shut up about your obsession with Patrick. Where's the only thing that I'm interested in? She's facing major orthopedic surgery in the morning. I'll be here. Oh, in that case, I guess I'll wait at home. Several hours in this room with you is a fate devoutly not to be wished. Here. This should be in water. Take care of it. Tune for scenes from the next One Life to Live.